and your latest article, what we can learn from your column, what we can learn from Gen Z workers. It sounds like uh, the inspiration for this was a, a headline in Fortune magazine. Is that right? Yeah, it was uh, this this Fortune magazine story that was then sort of reposted in in various places. It's behind a Fortune is behind a paywall, so it's uh, Yahoo Finance also had a, a version of the same article, and it's something to the effect of bosses are firing Gen Z grads just months after hiring them. Here's what they say needs to change. So I, you know, thought, oh, maybe. Uh, Gen Z is going to change workplace culture. And instead, the entire story was about how Gen Z workers needed to change in order to remain hired and in order to retain their jobs. And it's basically um, a, almost like a, a very condescending, patronizing diatribe written in the form of a report that's, re that's re reporting actually the results of a study that was done on why Gen Z workers are just not very diligent uh, compared to their older, you know, uh, peers, uh, older colleagues. They prioritize their own mental health. Oh, wow. <laughs> they are not as motivated. They're often late to work in meetings. They use language inappropriate um, for the workplace. Um, so basically, the entire story casts Gen Z workers as not being very professional, but really that obscures the fact that what they want is for Gen Z workers to do what many of us have done, which is give our lives, our whole selves over to right. our work, our workplaces, our employers and say, anything you need, I'm available 24 seven. You can call me after hours. Sure, I'll stay late and, and finish this report. I'm available over the weekends. Um, sure, I'll do more than I was hired to do just to show you that I'm a go-getter and will earn that raise that you're promising gen right. z workers are phoning it in or working to rule really and uh prioritizing their own work-life balance and their own mental health and traditional employers just don't like that so that was the no I, i'm so interested in the topic it's really interesting first of all i think gen z is um you know gen z's are another capital i mean generations are another capitalist construct but i, I think gen z is a born after 2000 is that right or yeah uh, roughly 2000 exactly yeah and so uh you know i've been fascinated how first millennials and now gen z are uh are changing the workplace so when i saw that headline in your first paragraph i thought that too but there is this kind of culture clash that strikes me as reflective of a of a larger paradigm shift i mean you're absolutely right uh, sonali that our generation you know uh and the generations before uh were overly perhaps identified with their jobs unless it's a real vocation a real career you know i remember i had a friend who was a bartender jimmy and jimmy was dating a very well-known uh um actress actually and and uh at parties that he, where he'd go with her people would say what do you do and he would say about what <laughs> um, you know because he wasn't buying it into the whole uh i am what i do for a living so uh, gen z is taking a different approach it reminded me a little bit of quiet quitting remember when Absolutely. we were talking about quiet quitting how people hey they're doing the work but they're not staying after five or working through their lunch break well you're not paying them to is there right. a, is there a relationship there you think i think so um and and you know the qu quiet quitting was the corporate uh label for right. unions work to rule which is you're hired to work nine to five you work nine to five and when you're in the middle of negotiations or if you're trying to sort of send a message you you don't go even a, a hair over exactly doing what you were hired to do to send a message that you're not just a cog in the wheel, that you're a person, you have dignity. Um, for me, the most important aspect of this story was also that Gen Z workers are very clear that they are severely underpaid. They have high mm -hmm. expectations of money. And I think we always, whenever we talk about work, let's talk about money because money is what enables people to 
just, you know, have homes and have comfortable lives. Billionaires are so clear about protecting their money. And the rest of us are expected to sort of work for, you know, do the things we love to do, even if it means not making enough money. So Gen Z workers and this story in Fortune also pointed out the fact that Gen Z workers expect to get, you know, starting salaries of six figures. How dare they? What hubris? But it turns out that a majority of, uh, or at least about half of um, uh, Gen Z workers in one survey uh, were found to have been earning in uh, starting salaries only between thirty and sixty thousand dollars a year, which is still, which is really not enough. I mean, I remember I was earning about thirty thousand a year as a starting worker, in you know just fresh out of graduate school, and that was 25, 30 years ago. People should not like that number should have risen dramatically by now, given that housing prices have risen dramatically, food prices have risen risen dramatically, our wages are st has stagnated, and in real terms, in inflation adjusted numbers have fallen. And if Gen Z workers are upset about the fact that they are um, earning so little that they are their starting salaries are so low and they're not thinking oh oh I don't have the experience therefore maybe I don't deserve a higher salary or uh, this job will be good it will be a good stepping stone to something better if they're not espousing attitudes like that good on them maybe we can learn a thing or two about our own value our own dignity as workers right because at the same time uh, that their salaries have stagnated or worse uh, inequality has soared so that if they're in the private sector, the people who own their their employer are probably doing extremely well. Plus, student debt is so much worse now than ever before. So for those, maybe it's roughly half, maybe a little less, uh, that go into the workplace encumbered with this massive debt, they have to deal with that. And then you point out, too, that, you know, the climate is a mess, and uh, uh, there are other problems yeah. with the world they're inheriting. They graduated in the midst of a pandemic, most of them, so or many of them. So, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, make, people graduated in 2024 this year. They started out as freshmen, most of them, in 2020, mm, as right. the lockdowns were happening. They faced, you know, at, at a time in their lives when they likely needed the most connection. You know, you're, you're, when you're uh, an 18, 19, 20-year-old, you want to form relationships with other people. You've left your home and your family, and they were isolated. And it, you know, naturally of course, uh, damage their mental health and also cause them to think really deeply about the world that they're living in. And it has shaped their worldview and they have, their priorities are clearer. They are not just uh, living to work. They are working to live. Um, and, and, if, and they're facing climate catastrophe. I point out that Pew Research shows that today's young generation is the most racially and ethnically diverse than any other previous generation and also the most uh, well-educated and they're facing climate catastrophe. They're seeing a genocide unfold on the other side of the planet. Right. People who largely look like them, fueled by their own government that is refusing to, to stop it. Um, and they are dealing with, you know, the, the aftermath of the pandemic, the public health crisis. You know, young people are facing the, the biggest impact. They, they grew up in the specter of gun violence. Um, and, and over and over and over again, they have been told that society doesn't care very much for them and they are supposed to drop everything and give their souls to their corporate employers. If they respond with hell no, who could blame them? And in fact, we need to take their lead. You know, it's funny because it is such a, a clash between the culture we've normally had and maybe the, you know, I think you're kind of arguing in a way the culture uh, they're entitled, they should have, but, uh, you know, we were definitely ways to believe that, you know, you're a hard work. That, I, I remember being so flattered because the father of a friend of mine who was a really tough, difficult guy, an editor, actually, uh, many years ago, 
when I was a teenager said, I like that ass gal, he's a worker, you know, and it's like, yeah, I'm a worker. But uh, it was a compliment. So, yeah, well, I took it as a compliment. I'm still doing away, but you know, because, because I work on things I care about and I think are important, but a job is a transaction, right? And so I was thinking as, as I was reading your piece that here we have in the, in the private sector, the lowest rate of unionization, you know, it's so low compared to what it used to be 60 years ago, for example, that maybe this is a different kind of uh, power rebalancing between employers and employees. I don't know if you have any thoughts about that, but pop yeah. your head. I mean, I think that young workers are setting high expectations for themselves and training their employers to set low expectations for them. And which is, I think, a really, really good thing to, you know, we, we, we have flipped the, the, the dynamic between boss and worker, uh, we meaning Gen Xers like me, uh, and, and, you know, folks of our generation who, really grew up believing in the idea of a merit-based economy. The harder you work, the smarter you right. are, the more you give, the more you'll get. You, you know, you, you, it's a, you, you do this, you're going to get this back. And that promise has been broken with the stagnating wages, with the mass layoffs, with the failed, with the, with the corporate, corporate bosses attacking union drives. Um, and if if that end of the bargain has broken, why should workers keep their end of the bargain over and over and over again? Um, and so I think it's really incumbent upon us to see why Gen Z folks are having these attitudes in the workplace and to really start to think about what we, you know, they have, they have, they have to clean up the mess that we have made in in creating a workplace culture that's unsustainable, in creating a climate that's unsustainable, in fueling a genocide that isn't ending. Over and over again, they've been told that there's nothing they can do by these big, big problems, but they should work hard and put in extra hours. No. And um, I think it's really important for us as a collective older generations to think about making the world a better place for Gen Z and not not asking Gen Z to do more for us. <laughs> and, you know, the other piece of it is becoming a better person. Uh, when I was working in the communist world and I can hear people saying, yeah, OK, that confirms my suspicions about Eska. But I was working for the State Department there. Uh, you know, the communist motto was eight, 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 eight hours of work, eight hours of, of leisure, eight hours of sleep. And here, of course, it's like 12, three, five or what I, you know, I mean, it's very skewed toward. And, and, and actually, I should mention on that, the Fortune article pointed out that schools are trying to prepare students to basically like beat the 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 dignity out of them right. by with, with the example of one high school in London that is quote trialing a twelve hour school day to prepare pupils for Jeez. adult life. Can you right. imagine that a twelve hour school day so that they can be obedient cogs in the corporate wheel and churn out profits for their bosses? How yeah. demoralizing and dehumanizing that is for those young young people who are basically being trained to be serfs you know in, in Ab this absolutely and uh you know in terms of being human beings you know, i think about my dad who was an incredibly hard worker and you know had no friendships and you know not a great dad to be honest and when he finally retired you know then he worked on building relationships and it went pretty well but why should you have to wait until you're 70 or 75 to be a, a, a human being, you know, so if part of what they're doing is creating, everybody talks about work-life balance, if part of what they're doing is creating by sheer force of population as they, they become more of the workforce, creating better work-life balance, then I guess more power to them. Yeah, exactly. I think they have so much to teach the rest of us. And if they are going to stick to their guns and not be beaten down by corporate culture, 
then I hope that they can change that those expectations for all of us. A four day work week, unlimited paid time off as long as you get you know your major deadlines done. No working more than what your job description is about. And if you want um, workers to do more than uh, what's outside their job description, just reset the job description in collaboration with them and attach a higher salary to it. Pay people for the work they're doing instead of. Um, hoping, you know, instead of deciding that people need to beg and plead and 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 uh, be, a, you know, basically s- s- uh, sacrifice their own dignity at the altar of corporate profits just in order to keep their crappy jobs, right? That's, if they can change that dynamic, then it'll be better for all of us. Plus, if the people who own these companies uh, are being so greedy and keeping so much of the of the pie, they got it coming to. I mean, exactly, exactly, <laughs> absolutely. Um, by the way, Starbucks just, I believe, did its fi- unionized its five hundredth cafe. These are all young workers, young, highly educated, racially diverse workers who are leading this incredible union uh, struggle in Starbucks cafes across the country. Of course, they still don't have a union contract, but they're joining the Starbucks Workers United. And that's such a great example. I didn't bring that into this article, but that is, you know, there again, you're seeing a resurgence in unionization by Gen Z workers. And Gen Z workers, when they're unionizing, they work hard to do it. So, uh, so now they call hot car, a uh, really interesting, stimulating topic. So thanks for writing the article. And of course, as always, thanks for coming on the program. Thank you so much, Richard. Always a pleasure. We depend on your support here at the Zero Hour. So please give whatever you can at any of the links you see on your screen. Thanks so much.